Today I would like to have a look at Gordon Murray's T50 and T50S. In general, the key to a good car is packaging. Packaging is one of the reasons why Red Bull used to dominate Formula 1, why Mercedes is dominating Formula 1 today, and why Tesla's performance is hard to reach. But bad packaging can also destroy a car's concept. The T50 is a prime example for what is possible with good packaging. The car is around 200 mm shorter than the Porsche 911 and weighs less than 1000 kg. And it's a mid-engine V12 supercar with a mild hybrid powertrain and lots of additional features. So let's have a closer look at the concept. The team around Gordon Murray is partly the same as for the McLaren F1. And now, nearly 30 years later, they picked up the same concept and improved it with the experiences they gained in the past. The T50 has a free seat and monocoque with the diffuser rising up right behind the bulkhead. But the diffuser in the T50 is special. Diffusers in road cars and lower motorsport categories are usually convex diffusers, which means that they have a smooth and gentle increase in angle. On one hand, that makes them more stable aerodynamically, because flow separations are less likely, but on the other hand, they also give you more packaging space in the engine bay. F1 teams use concave diffusers. There is quite an aggressive so-called kick point where the speeds are very high and the flow is very stressed. In some cases, the flow can only stay attached because the diffuser is supported by the strong suction of the rear wing. Now, if the rear wing suddenly loses a lot of his downforce because you enable DRS, the support for the diffuser is not enough and the flow is stalling. That gives you a lot less downforce, but also less drag. As soon as you hit the brakes and DRS is disabled again, the rear wing quickly builds up his suction again and the flow in the diffuser reattaches. But because the rear is raised under braking and the diffuser angle even increases, reattachment of the flow can be a problem. Also, depending on the weather conditions, the time to reattach can vary and this could leave the driver with a loose rear end, which is destroying his confidence, or can even leave him spinning out. The T50 is using the same kind of concave diffuser, but the difference to F1 is that it's much bigger because it doesn't have to comply with the rulebook. So the T50 has a kick point too, where the flow will separate under normal circumstances. To package such a diffuser, the T50 is using a relatively slim 65 degree V12 engine with the primaries pushed to the top. This is a high revving, low stroke, 4 liter V12 engine. Low stroke means lower average piston speeds because the piston is traveling less distance per revolution. It also means a small diameter crankshaft and hence a lower engine with less inertia. Cool about the engine is also that there is no belt drive and at the front of the crankshaft sits a 40 volt starter generator which can start the engine but also works as an alternator. If we have a closer look at the primaries, we can work out that this engine has quite a different firing order than what a V12 usually has. A 12-cylinder four-stroke engine fires every 60 degree, and you combine the cylinders with the firing gap of 240 degree together. Usually the first three and the last three cylinders of one bank are connected. But at this Cosworth engine, we see that on each bank, the first, third and fifth cylinder are connected. The car then features a manual transversal gearbox. This box is the lightest and smallest solution. Because the engine is naturally aspirated and the maximum torque is not as high as on turbocharged engines, the gearbox can be lighter. Because the box is so short, there is more space for diffuser design and other components behind it. Additionally, the weight is concentrated closer to the middle of the car, which keeps the moment of inertia low. GMA then created a module which includes a 48 volt battery, a cooling system for it, and a 12 volt battery. This whole module only weighs 12 kg and is positioned at the front of the car and is fed by the 48 volt starter generator at the front of the engine. 48 volt enables you to transmit electric power with less current, which reduces the diameter of cable, which in return lowers the weight. This system also allows you to run an 8.5 kW electric fan at the back of the car. So if we look back to the Brabham fan car, it basically featured a large fan at the back which sucked the air out of the sealed floor area. Since force is pressure times area and the area underneath the car is very big, you only need little under pressure to create massive amounts of downforce. The function of the fan here is a bit different. Similar to the McLaren F1, the T50 is using a fan to make the air follow an aggressive diffuser shape. The difference now is that 
Murray's team had enough time to develop the system. So they used this massive fan to suck the low energy boundary layer right after the kick point and make the air follow the aggressive shape. This gives them 30% more downforce. The trick with stalling the diffuser now is the same as in F1. If they close the valves to the diffuser, the flow cannot follow the shape anymore and will stall. There will be a separation bubble and while the diffuser will still produce some downforce, the drag will be 12.5% lower. At the same time, the fan can create up to 15 kilograms of thrust and blows into the weight behind the car. Let's have a look at some numbers to understand what's happening here. If we assume an air density of 1.3 kg per cubic meter, a relatively high drag coefficient of 0.38 for this car in its high downforce configuration, a frontal area of 2 square meter and a top speed of 365 km per hour, then you get an aerodynamic force which is pushing you back of a bit under 5100 newton. Since one newton meter is one watt second, one newton meter per second is watt, so power. Hence, if we multiply this force by the speed, we will get the required power to overcome that drag. In this case, we would need 515 kilowatt only to overcome the aerodynamic resistance, but the engine only has 480 kilowatt. Now the tire resistance. If we assume a weight of 1000 kilogram, a coefficient of 0 0.01, this results in around 10 kilowatt to overcome the rolling resistance of the car at that speed. Now we switch on the fan with its 15 kilograms of thrust. This is around 150 newtons of thrust, which is around 3% of the total drag in this example. Murray said this would be around 2.5%. If we now deduct this thrust of the total drag, we require 500 kilowatt to travel 365 kilometers per hour. But we also need to take into account that the fan is changing the flow field of the car significantly and this results in a further drag reduction of 12.5%. So this results in around 437 kilowatt that you need to overcome the drag. This means you're saving around 78 kilowatt of power to drive the same speed. So like Murray said, you will get back the 8.5 kilowatt that you fed into the rear fan multiple times. So that's the genius system of the T50 and now let's have a look at the T50S. This is the race version and everything has been tuned to the best track experience. The fan will only run on high downforce mode. The air intakes for the air conditioning are underneath the headlights for the T50. Since there's no air conditioning in the T50S, the system has been simplified to the maximum. The intakes underneath the headlights have been blanked and the center naked duct is feeding right into the interior. The side naked ducts are there for brake cooling, but I was a bit surprised by their angle. To increase front downforce, the car has a large splitter and flicks at the side. The wheel arches are louvered at the top to give more exit area for the front axle. Because the upper air intake in the engine cover does not exist anymore, the oil radiators went into the sides of the car. Usually this position is not very effective because the only thing you will get here is the front rear wake. Cars like the Audi R8 or Lamborghini Aventador can only make these radiators work with additional fans. Other manufacturers like Ferrari or McLaren move the side intakes further up to get clean air. In case of the T250S, this shouldn't be a problem because the car has a powerful barge board right behind the front wheel to push the wake further outside and keep a clean airflow close to the bodywork. Because they move the roof scoop further forward and further up to avoid sucking in the boundary layer, they have 30 more horsepower now. The rear wing is quite interesting because of its delta shape. It has a long cord in the center, which means that it will generate most of its downforce in the center. And it's also mounted from below in the center. Murray said that they had 1,900 kg of downforce and detuned the car back to 1,500 kg. If you look at it from the outside, it doesn't look like the most spectacular car we've ever seen, but because of its clever tricks underneath and because of its superior packaging, this has potential to be one of the greatest supercars we've seen so far. It's always great if a car concept makes sense as a whole system and if every part on the car is there for a reason. This is rare in car industry and it's definitely the case here. Let me know what you think about Gordon Murray's latest creations in the comments below.